I was a striker in Australia, I wasn't getting looked at. He said, if you really want to take football serious, my sister lives in, in London and you can go over there and, and, and try and make something. And I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. So you've just left all your family and then you've got to go to a new school, new country, literally the opposite side of the world. I didn't expect it to be how it was because obviously Australia is a lot different to London. The trials only came when they swapped me to a centre back. The ball was coming up to me, it was not sticking. The ball was going everywhere and then there was like this, it was like a nearly done. The ball got crossed in, it was literally an open goal. Like I was in the six yard box, I've just smashed it over the bar, went into the bushes. He just blew the whistle, he said, training, stopped. Everyone's came in, yeah, he's in the middle, we've got like a little circle around him. He's going, Jay. Welcome to Ball Talk with me, Lewis Bryan. In today's episode, I'm joined by a professional footballer for Accrington Stanley, Jay Rich Bagalut. Right, Jay, thanks for coming on, mate. No, so good, so good. I uh, appreciate the time. A uh, bit of bit of context on on you. Obviously, you're currently at Accrington Stanley, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you've played for a few clubs before that: uh, Crystal Palace, Welling, Dulwich. Uh, and then obviously a few in a few in Australia, um, mm -hmm. and we were obviously at Palace together for a yeah. few years, um, and we'll get on to all that. But I want to start with the present day, okay? So, talk to me. How's the uh, how's the season been so far? Um, it's been good. Obviously, I had an injury last year, so I didn't play for the whole last year, the whole season of last year, basically. I, think I played like two games, literally. Um, Started off this season um, quite well, obviously, coming back from that injury. Um, just getting my fitness back, really, you know, um, getting into the into the flow of games. Um, but yeah, yeah, we started we started we started the season strong, to be fair. Yeah, I see you're uh, you're tenth in the league at the moment. I think you're I think it's like you're four points off the playoff playoffs, yeah. which is decent decent position to be in, isn't it? I actually yeah, see you've got uh, you've got seven yellows and one red. <laughs> oh my so, days! Oh, uh, you see what it is, yeah. With me, um, sometimes I can be a bit rash. Do you understand? Yeah. So obviously, yeah. When I've come back from this injury, I've been a little bit like off pace. I haven't, I haven't really felt myself. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's like a long injury. You know, when you're coming back from that injury, it just feels a bit. Oh, you feel a little bit like a couple seconds behind. So I've just yeah. been dangling my foot in, dangling, and then. Just picking up little yellows and the red. Have you seen the red? Have you seen it? <laughs> no, I haven't, mate. I haven't. I might have, but was it, was it recent? It weren't recent, was it? No, no, it wasn't recent. It was like a month, month or so ago, a couple of months ago. Yeah, it was yeah. rash. I was red. <laughs> but it's football, isn't it? It's what it is. Yeah, I, mate, I know, as, I know as well, coming back from long injuries, like it always takes it the higher level as well, like. One second off, and you're, and it is like, does look like a proper late bad tackle, doesn't it? But that's all it takes, just a little half a yard off. But um, I want to talk a bit about your gaffer at the moment. So John Coleman, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's he? Um, what's he like? What's he like as a bloke? He's great manager. Like, yeah. Since since the first step I took through the door, he's always been like um, behind me. Um, he puts he puts trust in all of his players. Um, just a great guy on and off the pitch to be fair so I have no no words to say about him yeah is he, has he been there your whole time yeah he's been there the whole yeah. time he's been there for years and years now so um, yeah he's like he's really experienced he, he knows what he's talking about and yeah like, I love him as a gaffer yeah what, um, what's his what's his like football style like would you say um, like his philosophy Style of football, the accurate and Stanley, would style, you say? I don't know. Like, um, we try and play. Um, obviously, um, no risks at the back. And, yeah, just get the ball out wide, get crosses in the box, get shots off. We just, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Does he, um, does he speak, like, specifically, let's say to you, like the, like the sort of demands he puts on you? Does he, do you? does he speak to you individually about that? Or is it more like the demands on the team he focuses on? Every manager's different, the, isn't they? Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, you know, he, he speaks to, to, to everyone. He speaks to me. He speaks to. He has like. Um, he's very good with um, individuals. So with um, player management. Um, so yeah, he does speak to me. He gives me words of advice. Like 
as I said, he's very experienced and um, yeah, he's just he's a, he's a great gaffer. He's a great gaffer. Yeah, have you ever? Um, I know you play centre back, obviously under him. Yeah. Um, have you ever? I know you you like like the ball at your feet. Have you ever tried to venture out? Yeah, different position. Like, he, he 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 lets you. He lets you. Like, that's one of my strengths, isn't it? I'm um, bringing the ball out, so he sees that as a strength. He'll let me do what I need to do, and he puts his trust into me. And obviously, when you have the gaffer's trust, you feel feel very confident and things work for you basically so yeah yeah it's always nice isn't it? it does that confidence just breeds good good performances at the end of the day yeah it's, you always want that the confidence from the gaffer like the trust from the from from the team behind you and obviously when you've got all of that um it's, it's easy to play basically yeah when so you you joined there from crystal palace yeah yeah and um, so that was your first like men's football really first experience was it first experience of men's football actually or not oh i, I played at a dulwich wedding that was like men's football but men's football in the league um, yeah was the first time so so talk to me about that what was your what was your experience of that was it do you remember your debut very well debut uh, back in Sun Sun sunderland came on for like three minutes oh head okay collision. <laughs> just like a mad head collision but obviously it was yeah, it was just really aggressive. It was it was different. Ball was in the air a bit. Um, the crowd, obviously. Um, I don't know. It was just a different atmosphere. Like it just felt, you know. I was obviously I, I played with a smile on my face, but that was like, yeah, like this feels like football to me. Do you know what I'm trying to yeah, say? The, so, yeah, the, it was yeah, the intensity just different. Yeah. Yeah, it was proper sick. Proper sick. Well, what was the level like? Because you know it's a level, obviously. Compare it to the twenty threes at Palace or the twenty ones. Um, what would you say the difference is in terms of the level? I would say it is a lot more intense. Um, it's, it's a lot faster and intense, as in like there's more the online, isn't there? Yeah, but like the type of challenges that are coming in, are like a, they're proper, they're vicious compared to like the under twenty threes. Um, because when you play under twenty threes, like a bit pretty. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Obviously, when yeah. I went and played with Accrington, like it just felt more like it's a dog eat dog kind of game. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, I think that's what the main difference was. Yeah, I always think a good comparison is like twenty threes is almost like sparring with boxing, and then when you go men's football, it's like a fight, isn't it? It's like the actual fight. Yeah, but twenty threes is like it's very technical. Like I think um, I needed that that side. Obviously, if it wasn't for Palace, then I wouldn't be where I am today. And um, they, they they taught me a lot there, and obviously I can implement certain aspects of that game into like where I am now at Accrington. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, definitely good skills transfer over 100. Um, yeah. I'll talk about your debut season a bit. So you you got two goals I think that season. I remember yeah. one very clearly. Um, was that your first yeah. one? You know the one I'm thinking of, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't my first one though. My first one was against Bolton. Oh, okay. Volley. And then, um, yeah, that second one against Wimbledon was... Yeah, decent. You know, when you just hit it and you just kind of know. What was it? You got the ball and like sort of... You already just... I was I playing left had... back. I was playing left back, innit? I was playing left back and, yeah, I've got the ball out like left back up in their, in their half and I've just fought. And I, I've taken a, like a big touch and it was nil-nil and I just like, I just might as well have a go. Smacked it and it just... Flew in. I was like, "Oh my days!" I didn't even know what to do. I just, I was like, I was like "Oh!" Just turned yeah. around, and started running. And I was like, oh, "That's my the days. worst, isn't it? You're what? so shocked yourself. You don't know where. What's your celebration?" Well, I, I did not know what to do. I was lost. I was lost. But it was good. It was a good feeling, though. Did that get the win that game or not? You... Yeah, we won. We won that game. I think we won that four three. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. So vital yeah, goal. Goal fest. Goal fest. That game. Um. So that that obviously that debut season, you were League One. Who who would you say the toughest team is you played in that season? Mm. Was there a standout tough team? I don't know. You had like the Ipswich. Ipswich were good. Um, I think Ipswich were probably like really strong that year. Like I remember playing them and they were literally just bopping the ball. 
That was my second game playing for Accrington. So a bit of a shock they're keeping it. Yeah, 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 that was like mad. Even when when I was walking out and I saw like the stadium and the fans and all that, I think it was like 27,000 fans. So I was playing playing, like, I don't know, like three weeks ago, I was playing 23s. So like 100, 200 people max. (laughs) Now I'm walking out 20,000 fans. I'm like, nah, this is like next level. But it was, yeah, it was, it was surreal, but Ipswich were like proper strong. Bolton were good. Um, but yeah, like I just took it. Like I don't know, like that when I first signed, I really, I was just loving it. Like everything that was coming up, I was just playing, and I just felt good. Obviously, no injuries. I was just, I was just loving it. A good spell, wasn't it? Did yeah. you do you find the crowd like com- from twenty threes to to for, like playing in front of twenty thousand? Do you find the crowd? Yeah like sort of switches you on even more takes you to another level or yeah it, de- it definitely does um like you'd hear people say it and that but obviously when you're playing it's a whole different um experience because i never played in front of that many people and obviously i'm just thinking oh, you just do the same thing you'll just play how you normally play in it but obviously when you have that crowd behind you i don't know like there's just like a little a little bit of it, they just get you going. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but like when you're playing, you understand. If you've played like in front of those type of crowds, you understand what I'm trying to say. And um, yeah, they they just get you going. Yeah, it gets the adrenaline pumping, doesn't it? Literally. Um. So that that first season, you, so you ended up. I think you ended up getting relegated, didn't you? Uh, there was a season when I got injured last year. Oh, last year. Okay. So you got you yeah. got relegated last year. Um. One thing I was curious, like within within the club, like how does like you come you got just been relegated, you come back in pre season. How does does the manager sort of address it and say right what what he's what he wants for like how he's gonna approach the fact you just got relegated? Do the players say anything? Like I don't obviously, know how does how does the club take it overall? Yeah, it was it was a bad season, obviously, but um. I don't know. Like, there's there's not much you can do about it after that. So, um, obviously, um, as a squad, we spoke about it, and um, we're now looking forward. That's all you can do is look forward, and and I don't know. Like, you need to be positive about the season that's gonna follow, because you keep thinking about that. Like, you just a downward spiral, basically. And um, as you can see, we started off the season quite quite good. Well, four points set from um playoffs and yeah just we're just pushing on yeah that's that's got to be the best way and it just like you said if you keep thinking about that past it's just going to keep having that effect in your mind and it affecting your attitude and your maybe your performances as well yeah like it obviously no one wants to get relegated and it hurt everyone the club hurt everyone so everyone wants to put it right we've got a good 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 dressing room this year and yeah we're just looking forward just looking forward yeah, so that was obviously League One to League Two. Um, yeah. Did you? I, I'm always interested to ask this. Do you know? Did you notice a difference? Like any clear difference between League One and League Two? Because there's always the debate: is there a difference? Some people say yes, big difference. Some people say there's not much. What's your experience um, of that? Um, I think with um, League One, obviously, like the top end of the table, the teams are a bit more like they play a bit more football and. I don't know, they've got I don't know, a bigger budget. They got some better players. But like overall I think it's not like a major, major difference. I feel like League Two is a bit more I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's a bit more like aggressive than League One. I feel like League One was a bit more it was still aggressive, don't get me wrong, but I feel like League Two is just more I don't know, balls are in the air, it's a bit more scrappy, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, a bit so, more fight. Yeah, Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's so, the right word, but, but I get what you're yeah, saying. Overall, I don't think it's a major, major difference. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. that's it's interesting. It's always interesting to know. Visually, I've always thought there's not like when I'm when you watch it, there's always you can't really tell. Like I always feel like the teams in the middle of the table of both leagues would would not look out of place playing each other. Yeah, but obviously there is like there's some quality teams in League One, in it. Like there's there, there is some. Some good teams, but obviously they've got like a a, a lot bigger budget. So yeah, of course. standard obviously is, is is better. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right, I want I want to take it back a bit now. Okay, 
because yeah. I know you grew up in Australia, yeah? You were born yeah, and grew yeah. up in Australia? Yeah. So talk to me briefly about what, what was your upbringing like in Australia? Uh, well, I was born in Sydney. Yeah. And then I stayed there for a couple of years, I think, until I was about four or five. Then I moved to, to France, moved to Paris, and I, I had a good upbringing. Um, uh, well, I started school in France. So if I started speaking French, I was my first language, started playing football in France. And then I Really? Left. French, French your first language, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. French was my first language. And then I came back to Australia when I was 10. And then, yeah, I was just, I was just, I don't know, it was, it was, Australia was fun, like. Yeah. I wasn't, really, like, that, I wasn't really, like, taking anything really serious, you know. I was just, I don't know, I was surfing, skateboarding, rollerblading, I don't know, like, I was just doing, I was just having fun as a kid. I wasn't really, I was playing football, obviously. My dad was hard on me. My dad was really hard on me. And Did he get you into football? Favorite. Yeah, yeah. He got me into football in France. He started, he started playing there. And then, I don't know, my mum, I, I, I signed up, I was swimming a lot. I was like, I was doing a lot of like, I was just doing bare different sports, you know? Do yeah. You know what I mean? I was doing That's the best thing things. as a kid, isn't it? Yeah, like I had a great childhood and then turned 16 and then moved to London when I was 16. And that was it, basically. And then I was just trying to find a team in, in, in London. So so what I wanted to ask, all like, so you're in Australia for, obviously you went to France for a few years, come back to Australia. Yeah. How comes you decided to then like mainly pursue football and not, I don't know, like rugby or Aussie football or some of the bigger sports out in Australia? Um, was was you just better small. at football? No, I wasn't playing rugby. Like, I started playing rugby, but I was, I was so small when like some of the kids were like massive. I remember You playing, were small, yeah. Yeah, I was tiny. I was small, skinny. I didn't want to. I didn't want to get the ball and run at any any anyone because I was too small. Like I did one run and I just got picked up and dropped on my back. I was like, nah, it's not for me. This, it's not for me. <laughs> so then, like, I just kept swimming and then playing football. And then my dad just pushed me to play football. And there was times where I didn't even want to play football. I was just skateboarding and surfing and just hanging with my mates. And then, yeah, I just. I don't know. My dad just kept pushing, 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 and then he said, "If you really want to take football serious, um, my um, my sister lives in in London, and you can go over there and, and and try and make something." And I said, "Yeah, that's what I want to do." So then I just left. Okay, so that's how the move come about to go to. It wasn't it wasn't really like a football team in London, sort of sit see you in Australia playing, and then sort of invited you. Nah, in Australia, family, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was I wasn't really getting looked at. I was a striker in Australia. I wasn't getting looked at, so I was playing like the lower lower leagues. I played for um, Gold Coast United. Yeah, Gold Coast City. I don't know at the time, and I was playing striker. I was like, well, I wasn't really taking it like majorly that serious. My dad was yeah. behind me, but you know, like I was I was still going to the beach and chilling with my mates, and do you know what I mean? Yeah, but when like he said, if you wanna if you wanna take this serious, you can go to to live with my sister, which is my my auntie, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go. And then that's when like I proper started taking it serious when I was in um, England. Yeah, because I suppose then you've left all you've left your friends in Australia. You left like I suppose some of your family, so you've got a, really no option. You've got to knuckle down and hundred percent into it, and you. Yeah, I left everyone. I left. That was hard. It was just me and my dad. Obviously, my dad came for the journey and then just dropped me at my auntie's. Um, Mum said I had to go into into school here before I left Australia. So I had a school lined up and I landed. And then the next day, I went to school in, in, in London. I mean, how, that is mad, isn't it? How did you... So obviously, you've just left all your family and then you've got to go to a new school, new country, literally the opposite side of the world. How... How did you? I don't know. What was your emotions with that? Was you was you like excited or was it more like oh I'm a bit nervous, scared, left my family? Well, I've travelled like a lot since young. So I went to France. I've been back to Australia, and then I moved to different places in Australia. And then I don't know. I just took a. I was excited, really. I was I was happy to 
to leave Australia and, and and venture out and see see what what pathways I'll I'll put myself down. But I don't know. Like it was, I didn't expect it to be how it was because obviously Australia is a lot different to London. So yeah. you know, like the weather. Like when I came, it was freezing. And I was like, nah, this is this is different. There was no beaches. Everyone just looked miserable. I was like, oh, this is gonna be long. All just pale, no tans. <laughs> oh, I was like, this is gonna be long. But yeah, I went to school, and then I think it was sixth form. I went sixth form, Warlingham. It was in my area. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I went there. I stayed there for about I don't know four or five months, six months. Then I went to another college. But yeah, that was that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, so it was a massive culture shock, then, really. Yeah, it was. To be fair, I only went. I only went to to college and 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 school here just for socialization. I, di I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't really. I didn't do anything. Wasn't well studying there. really, yeah. No, I wasn't studying. I was so bad. Like, I used to go to school with one pen and one piece of paper. <laughs> that was it. That was literally it. Because I finished, I finished like my my education in Australia. So literally, I was coming here and I was like, oh, well, school's going to be good because I can make some friends. Do you know? I went, yeah. Like, there's no point in me just staying at home and not doing nothing. So yeah, I went to school. One pe one pen, one piece of paper. I used to finish the whole day, scrunch up the paper, throw it in the bin. <laughs> literally it's mad it's yeah, mad. yeah i suppose it's not yeah. that it's not too too bad if you if you know you finished it all in australia anyway you've just got to, like you said it's socialized and you've got to make new friends yeah i was just coming here to play football i just wanted to play football really that was it yeah so how the first english team was it the like first biggish english team you joined was dulwich yeah yeah it was yeah dulwich hammer i was 17, 17 yeah 18 I was in the academy. So how did how did it come about you joining them? Because oh, wow. obviously you were a striker at this point, weren't you? Yeah, I was still a striker. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was obviously I left this other school. I had problems with school, and I had to leave. And then I went to this college that had um they had this foundation thing. Okay, it yeah. was Fulham, Fulham Foundation, and I, as I got there, it, that was getting shut down, and the coach said um. There's these um, there's this team Dulwich Hamlet, and he told me a date to go there to train basically, and um, I just literally turned up at this this address that he sent, and and I was like this Astro thing, and I, I walked onto the Astro and I said, is this is this Dulwich? And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna join the group. They were already running around the pitch, and they said, yeah, just join the group. Put my boots on, bang. I was just running with them. It was weird, but then I'm <laughs> like, friends there. <laughs> Yeah, I made friends there, and then yeah, I was just joined in, trained with them. They said, yeah, like I just kept training. Like, I think a couple of weeks, and then he said, yeah, we've got like this academy program. Um, like we want you to join it, and then that was it. I joined it, and I stayed there. Yeah, lovely. And then I think you got eight appearances at the, for Dulwich. Yeah, obviously Eventually. I played there in the academy for I don't know, a year, a year or so. And then I yeah. uh, started getting involved with the first team. I went on some trials after that. But obviously, I was a striker at this point. The trials only came when they swapped me to a centre-back. So before that, I was a striker. And I was like, we were training in the academy and that. And um, I was playing up top. But like, the ball was coming up to me. It was not sticking. <laughs> ball was going everywhere. And then there was like this, it was like a nearly done. The ball got crossed in. It was literally an open goal. Like I was in the six yard box. I've just smashed it over the bar, went into the bushes. He just blew the whistle. He said, Training stopped. <laughs> Where, no he, he stopped the whole he's session. Cut you off. Yeah, he stopped the whole session. Everyone's, everyone's came in. Yeah, he's in the middle. We've got like a little circle around him. He's gone, Jay, we, we're going to try you at um, center half. No so way. I've, I've, I've gone back to center half now. And then I've just started smashing players, just smashing them. And then I was angry because he changed my position. I was like, I was going, I was thinking like, oh, I'm going to tell my dad that he's put me centre back, and he's going to be fuming. But I don't know. I started smashing players, and he just said, yeah, you might be the new centre half. And then um, a little college game because that's what we're doing. We're playing other colleges, other foundations. Yeah. And then um, in the game, I was starting centre half, and then ever since then, I just kept playing. Wow.
And you stopped the session there and then and said, nah, you're sent off. Stopped the whole thing in front of everyone. I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. Oh. Worked out good, though. Worked out good. Yeah. Yeah. Worked um. So then you obviously started, I'm guessing you started picking up some good performances playing centre half for them. Yeah, in the academy, I was playing, yeah. I was yeah. playing every game, scoring goals. I was just, yeah, I was just growing in confidence. And obviously, I had their back in. Um, they were behind me. They were, I don't know, they were, yeah, they were very supportive. Um, and when I had that behind me, I just, I don't know, I kept putting in performances, kept putting in, and then, um, I went on a few trials, and then I got used to after the trials didn't didn't happen, didn't work, and then they put me in the first team at Dulwich, and that's when um, I started playing in the first team there. Yeah, and then and then you went to Welling, I believe. After that, quite was that quite soon after you started playing in the Dulwich first team, you moved on to Welling. Um, I played about eight games, but it was at the yeah. end of the season, and. Um, I was I was I was running out. My contract was running out, and um, I got myself an agent. And I don't know, like they, they offered me a contract at Dulwich, didn't was, didn't like it. And then they and then my agent said, "Yeah, like Welling are after you." Well, not after me, but they, he called up Welling and said, "Oh, do you need us an half?" And then yeah, yeah, they said, "Yeah, we'll take him." And then I went there, played about I don't know. I think you played twenty one. <laughs> yeah, twenty something games. Yeah, and that was, yeah, that, I think that was like six months. Stayed at Welling for, and then I got, um, I went to Palace after that. That so that must be when Palace first you first heard the interest of Palace. That must be a good, a good feeling. Like obviously that's the they're a big Premier League club, and yeah. you've come over from the other side of the world, and you finally got the interest of, like I said, a big Premier League club. Well, do you remember how you first? felt when when they were interested well how it started was i wasn't actually meant to like it wasn't a trial or anything i was just meant because welling weren't training um it wasn't full time basically and um i said to my agent like if i need to if i need to get to the next level i need to be training full time as in like every day kind of thing do you know what i mean so 100 percent there was a link between Palace and Welling. Someone had a link and they said I could train at Palace. Yeah. So um, I think the manager at the time uh, of the 23 said, yeah, you can come in and train and I'll play my games at Welling. So that's basically what happened. I went in to play my games at Welling and I trained at Palace. And then I kept training and then it turned into a trial. And then, yeah, I got, got signed, but... It just happened so quick. Like now, when I'm thinking about it, like when I proper like go and deep, what actually happened? And you reflect was, back, yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't actually thinking at the time. I was just playing football. I was just enjoying. I was just doing what I like. I wanted to do basically. Like I was happy to go into Palace train. I wasn't even thinking of it as a trial. And then, um, yeah, like I was. I must have been playing well. And then I got. What did I? What happened? I got asked to play in a game. I think it was against Burnley or something at the yeah. time, so long ago. And I played well against them. And then I played another game for the 23s as a trial player. And I think you could only play two games. And then after that second game, my agent called me and said, oh, um, they're interested to sign you. And then Welling found out. And then everyone was happy for me. And yeah, I signed and that was it. Yeah, mate, that's buzzing. Buzzing for you. Is, uh, was it Sean Derry, the manager at the time for the 23? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sean Derry came and watched me at Welling and then, yeah, he, he so watched now, me. Um, and... he's, he's, he's the assistant at Wolves now, I think, under Gary O'Neill. Wolves, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they're doing quite well, them two. But, um, yeah, so he's, yeah. he's gone there. He's doing well. But yeah, that is, yeah. that's, a, that's a top, um, that is a top, top story. The fact that it's almost like, I always think what you just said that breeds the best results. Like, not you're just not even thinking or aware of what's really happening. You're just sort of in this that little bubble, and you're just enjoying enjoying life, enjoying your football, and it just yeah. that's the best way to be. Yeah, obviously, I've, I've come from Australia, like Crystal Palace. I was thinking, like, no, nah, this is mad. I've never, I never thought I was going to be playing there. I just, 
I just had like it was my dad. He pushed me, he pushed me, and then obviously when you have my dad behind behind me like that, all those years pushing, pushing, pushing. You kind of wanna, you kind of wanna do him uh, proud in a way. You know, you, all your family's behind you. I'm staying at my auntie's house. She's cooking for me. I'm oh, like I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm getting into trouble at school. I'm doing just. I don't know. I'm just being young, dumb, you know, and like. Obviously, foot, with the football that came around, it just took me out of that, and I was, I was in good hands after that, basically, and made everyone proud, and I just wanted to do well, basically. Yeah, mate, hundred percent, hundred percent. And so, obviously, we um, we was at Palace together. Um, obviously, I, I was injured pretty much your whole your whole spell there. Yeah. Uh, but how did you? How how was your time at Palace overall? Would you say? I loved it. I loved yeah. it. At Palace. It was it was different. It was it was it was a lot. It was my first time at an academy. First time training for um like being a full time player. Obviously, twenty threes. You're you're a pro in a way. Um, you're not a first team player, but I don't know. They treat you like a pro. Um, yeah, I loved it. If it wasn't for Palace, obviously, as I said before, I wouldn't be where I am today. They they gave me that platform, and I, I think I was twenty when I signed there. So yeah. from non league, and then. Yeah, like I, pro- I proper loved it there. I loved it. It was a good club. All the players were friendly. I loved it. Yeah. Was there any, speaking of the players, was there any players or coaches that someone maybe had a specific, or you remember them having a pivotal pivotal role to play in your in your time at Palace? Uh, or was it just the club in general? Sean, Sean, Sean Derry, obviously, he's the one that signed yeah. me. He's the one that, that pushed me. Um, Paddy... After during at the end before I went to Accrington, he he was helping me a lot. Like I don't know, like you 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 being it, everyone's so like helpful there. You know, yeah. like, everyone wants the best for you. Um, it's football at the end of the day. It's a it's a hard, it's hard industry. But I felt proper proper love the Palace. So yeah, um, it just didn't work out obviously. And then I went on to to play for Accrington and. I'm happy where I am now. Yeah. So what? Yeah. So in terms of your decision to, well, or decision to leave to go at Accrington. Yeah. What well, What were the reasons? What were your reasons behind that, or what was the situation? Well, obviously, I was getting to an age where uh, I wanted to play first team football. Um, I was still in the twenty threes. I was getting a bit older. I don't know. Like, I was playing against. I don't know. I was how old was I? I don't know. Twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, players were 18, 17. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I just wanted to play. I wanted to play competitive football and spoke to the club and had a game against Everton. Um, and um, my gaffer now came and watched me that that game. Played well. Um, after that game, gaff called up my agent. Agent told me that they're interested in signing me, and then. When I heard that, I was coming to the end of my contract at Palace anyway, and it was a no-brainer to me. So I just left. I think yeah. I left like a couple of days after that. Uh, I left. I came up to to Accrington and didn't look back. Basically, yeah, mate. I, it, it gets to that point as well. I think it's very easy for players to get, like you said, that you're so well looked after in academy. You got staff yeah. at every little part of your life. Yeah. Um, and it's so easy to get just stuck in that bubble, isn't it? Where you're just not playing men's yeah. football. You you almost you think you're like a Premier League player, but you're not really. Yeah, um, like yeah, it is true, um, isn't it? Like it's, it's easy to get caught caught up in that. And then some players do stay there for till they're like twenty three, twenty four, and then they just go out on these loans and don't really like it, come back, and then they're they're nowhere come mid twenties. Yeah, because um, it's so. I say you, you are in like a very very good bubble. Like obviously you you getting fed, you getting the right treatment, you getting the training, you getting literally everything you want. You're getting, and obviously that's that shapes you into someone that is reliant and you're dependent on that. So obviously when you're going out on loans now at that age and you have to do things yourself, you're still getting you're still getting help, you're still getting that, but you're you're a bit more independent and you need to do things that work for you do you know what i'm trying to say it's not it's not a 
not everyone's doing the same type of exercises. Everyone does their own bits and, and bobs what they need to do for their for their well being, basically. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And yeah, um, everyone has different needs, don't they? Exactly. So now when you're going into that environment, when you're used to being at uh, those type of big clubs where everyone's just behind you, everyone's just pushing you, pushing you, pushing you. I don't know. Some players can go to to on loan and they're not getting pushed, and they go the other way. So now they they feel like it's more relaxed now. They don't have everyone in their ear, and that's how I don't know they can go down a different path, and it, it don't work out for them. They want to go back to the other club. But when I left, I was I was happy. I was happy to go to Accrington. I, I I kept doing what I needed to do. Obviously, I only I was only at Crystal Palace for a couple of years, so I was used to I don't know being doing my own thing. I came over here by myself to England. Obviously, I had my auntie and my family behind me, but I, I was used to, to doing things myself and, and and working towards my goals. So when I went to Hackington, it was quite easy for me. Yeah, like you said, it's only a couple of years, whereas some people have it from, well, I was I was at Palace since I was eight, up until 23. So it's yeah. like, it's a, yeah, that's, if that's all you know, maybe, like you said, it is harder to yeah. become less become more depend, uh, independent and it's yeah, easier yeah. to slack off when you go into that first team environment yeah 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 100 um was it around was it around the palace time you got you started playing for your country yeah um i think it was i don't know how long ago it was i played in the 23s for australia i got called up for a few camps and um that was like a mad experience as well i got called up for the Olympic squad, and then that was crazy. I still yeah, that was the, the first team Olympics, wasn't it? Like the proper men's. Yeah, it was the proper thing. I was uh, obviously they had their squad, and then one of the players dropped out, and I was the next one to fill in. And then I ended up going to Tokyo. That was like that was the most like amazing thing. And then, like, that was probably like, my highest point in my football career, where I felt like this is. This is very good. My family were all happy. Everyone was proud. Um, yeah, and I was, I was at Palace at the time. They had me on. Uh, it was a good platform, obviously, and I was getting the interest from the Australian squad and the twenty threes. And yeah, I, I, it was a happy. It was a good time for me. Yeah, mate. That's what playing for your country is pretty much the biggest. Like that's what everyone dreams of, isn't it? As a kid. Any kid yeah. that wants to be a footballer, you dream of playing at the top level, which is, in my opinion, playing for your country, like representing your whole nation. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was top. Like, I loved it playing for Australia, and I think I in the Asian Cup I scored a goal. So yeah, I was proper happy with that. I'm real, yeah, that's top, mate. Um, one little thing I wanted to touch on. I know you t you mentioned it earlier on. Is uh, obviously your injuries. Mm. just come back from a little hamstring injury and am I right and you've done your ACL before is yeah that, that was right? last year yeah last yeah year. so I, I just want to I just want to know what obviously it's a tough it is tough to go through we both know what what's your what's your thought process and your mindset with dealing with them how did you how did you take it uh when I first done my that was my first big injury the my ACL so I used to get niggles and little little muscle injuries, but it wasn't nothing major. Yeah. So whenever I used to get little injuries, I, I, I didn't really, I didn't really remember doing uh, rehab when I before my this big injury because I used to just two three weeks and I was back playing and I just I felt brand new again. I never really got injured that much, and then when I realised it was a big injury. When they said I'll, I'll be out for the rest of the season, I didn't even process it. I, I just thought, nah, surely, like, I'll be back a bit sooner than that. And then, um, <laughs> that I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not thinking, I've never been injured where it's like, it's a major thing. But, like, they, everyone was like, like I came into to, to training and I was like, yeah, I've done my ACL. But I was talking normally and everyone's like, oh, oh, no, <laughs> no, that's so bad. Oh, and you're like naive yeah, to I'm it. So, so, yeah, I'm so sorry for you. I'm looking at it, I'm like, no, I'll be surely not. Because I didn't, after it, like my knee was proper swollen, but I, was, I didn't feel like, I, I actually thought they made a mistake when they done my Really? My right. I was like, no, surely not. I was kind of like trying to bend my knee and like, you know, bending it and seeing if maybe it was, a, <laughs> I don't know, three, four months maybe. Yeah. 
But then I realised after surgery and all that, that's it. Really, in my head, I was like, yeah, I'm fucked. Oh, shit, yeah. can't swear in it. No, I was like, oh, I'm done. That's what I was thinking. I was like, no, I'm proper done. And then, um, Mate, it's the surgery, isn't it? It's the surgery just absolutely kills you. No, when you wake up from the surgery and you're just there, you just feel, oh, you're just all drugged up and that. I was, I was just thinking, I'm really injured now. Like, this is, this is it now. This is proper rehab. But, yeah, I don't know what was going through my head at the time. I was obviously upset. I was disappointed because I was in a good... Obviously, I just came back from... Um, before that, I was at the Asian Cup. I was playing well. And I was just ready for that season, basically. It was, it was my second game into the season. And then, yeah, I just felt... I was just really upset. And then after that, I just thought, yeah, I just need to get back as soon as I can. So I just kicked on with my rehab and yeah try to get fit yeah do you just take it what each day at a time of your rehab is that how you focus yeah, just, just was, your sole focus in, on a day yeah yeah i was in like a lot of the time i was doing so many exercises i couldn't walk so i don't know like the first week or so i didn't really do nothing i think i was at home just playing on my ps5 just relaxing wasn't doing nothing but when i when I could do certain exercises, I kind of enjoyed it because I felt like I could get better each day at a time. And obviously, those times where I don't know, you're not seeing any progress. But um, overall, it was my first injury, so I was actually just, I was learning on the job, basically. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, hundred percent. So I didn't really understand the proper severity of what I've just done. And then, obviously, throughout the year, when I look back at it now, I understand, like, yeah, like it is proper tough being injured. So, yeah, especially when you know you're going to be out for that long. It is just a, it's just a battle with your mind every day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a mental thing. Obviously, you, you're going into football. You're not even with, like, you're part of the team, but you're not with the team. And um, you're just, you, you, you're not going out to the pitch with everyone. You're in, you're in like, a little gym. You're in... You're just by yourself. You're, you're literally by yourself and with the physios. So I was really... They become like your best mate at the end of, end of the rehab, don't you they? You know what I'm trying to say? You're with the physios. They're, they're doing everything. They're taking you everywhere. You're doing new new, new things with them. And it's just like, yeah, well, this is my life now. Just, I'm, I'm injured. So I don't know. It's, it is different. It is different. And it's a hard, hard thing to go through, especially when, like, I don't know. I'm, I didn't have my family up here with me. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a bit hard. And, um, yeah, I'm just happy. Also, like, everyone was helpful with me at Accrington. So, yeah, I got through it. Yeah. It's also good just not to overthink think it too much as well. Otherwise, you will just drive yourself insane, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, well, I just, wanna, just wanted to ask, off your, off your injuries now, uh, just about this season and the future. Do you do you have any plans for this season coming up, or the season we're in? Sorry. Uh, as in, yeah, I could just change. like do yeah. you set yourself little plans you want to reach. Maybe I, I don't know, like in the, playing individually? every game. Individually? Yeah, individually, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously, I sit down. I'll talk with my agent and and see what what I need to do. Um, individually, you get a few goals. Just want to try and play as much football as I can. So it's obviously a bit different because I've come back from the injury. So basically, my main thing was getting as many games in as I can. Cool. Um, I don't know, and just trying to feel myself again on the pitch. Coming back yeah, from yeah. Like 12, not playing for 11, 12 months, it's a long time. So I feel like this season is like my. I'm processing the injury season. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I then you, mate. I feel like. The more games I play, the better I'll get. And then, yeah, hopefully it's just, uh, I'm just going up from there. Yeah, and get back into that, like you said, just feel almost into that state where you're not thinking too much and you're just playing and enjoying it all. Yeah, because that's when I was playing my best, when I wasn't thinking. So now sometimes when I first came back from my injury, obviously my knee was still hurt and you're just thinking about, oh, I don't really want to go into that challenge. And then you're thinking like, also like the same type of, you're getting deja vu, like the ball would come over and I'm thinking, oh, that, that's exactly how, what happened with my injury. So I'm just thinking, oh, I don't want to really lunge like that again. And then, you know what I mean? You're not being yourself. Yeah, but of course. 
yeah, so obviously the more you're playing, the more comfortable you're getting, and then obviously I just want to get back to that, to that, to that, to the player when I wasn't really thinking and I was just enjoying my football, which I think is it's going to be soon anyway. Yeah, well, I hope it is, mate. I hope it is. Mm, um, you. Have you got time for some? We've got some quick fire questions, some from the viewers and some some from myself. Go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah all I'll good. Do that, yeah. So, okay, so quick fire, they you can be as well, it's quick fire, that means I have to be sharp with my No answer. no no no. So I've just you can take as long as you want, mate. I just I've just got about ten questions. Five are from me, five are from the viewers. Yeah. Um and take as long as you want. Yeah? I am. Um so best player you've trained with? Probably Zaha. Yeah. He, he was sick. Yeah, yeah I'd have to agree with you. <laughs> but he done some things in training that was you know, some things that he does is like, how did you do that? Yeah, he's he rap just, just rapid, him. I thought. Rapid. Yeah, he's explosive. I just think, like, he just kicks them all a bit different to the other players. It's weird. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it, yeah, weird, I know what you're like, saying. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just kick them all different. It's just a weird thing. But yeah, yeah probably Zaha, yeah. What about a uh, best player you've played against? So, in a match? Played against. If you know their name, I suppose. Um, you see, when I came on, um, there was a player in the the Egyptian squad. I don't know his name. A midfielder. Like yeah. he was like so sharp. Egypt, not El Nene. It was it, it was in the Olympics. I don't know who he was, but he was yeah. just so sharp. And I was like, yeah, he is. So, but I don't know. Like I played. I don't know because I've played other games against like certain strikers and. They've been like a bit challenging, and I don't know. I don't know. I really yeah. I some you look that. at in the game and you think, yeah, he's unreal, and then some you've actually faced, and it's like they've given me a tough time. Yeah, like just it's it's hard that because there's just there's different. There's certain players that are good at a certain thing, and then they're not really good at another thing. But they're like they're they're good. But I don't yeah. know. I, I couldn't tell you like the best player that I played against. Couldn't. Tell no, you. that's all good. Um. How about the quickest player uh, at Quinton? I think uh, I think I have the highest uh, sprint speed at Accrington. Oh, yeah, like, what top speed? Yeah. What is it? No, I was saying, have you got have you got top speed? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah. Obviously, before I was injured, it was I was the highest. I don't know who's the quickest now, though. Um, I think I'm the quickest. Yeah, you can I say think yourself. I'm the quickest. Yeah. I'm quite quick when I get going. Obviously, off the mark, it's a bit like, huh. but when I'm proper, like, in my stride, I think I'm the quickest. Hard to catch, yeah. Okay, nice. Um, best stadium you've played at, whether that's, yeah. like, visually, like, how the how the quality of the stadium or even the crowd, I suppose. My favourite my favorite stadium, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say, it was, it was Ipswich. Playing at Ipswich was like it, i think it was the crowd though that what the you 20, spoke about 20, earlier yeah the, the crowd was just it was the crowd for me that's what got me i, I don't really care about the stadium it was the crowd <laughs> i didn't care about the stadium it was the crowd the crowd was like all the ipswich fans it was like it was mad and you're, you're like the underdog and yeah i don't know i just love i love that that part of it so was yeah. it was it an evening kickoff no, nah, I was a f- no. Nah. Yeah, yeah, three, three or four. Oh, three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was sick. I was okay. Sick yeah, then. we'll we'll go Ipswich then. Um, your footballing idol, if you if you had one, or now. Uh, he, uh, well, I started watching football. I was watching Thierry Henry, Henry yeah. when I was when when I was younger, and then I was Striker, I suppose, with my dad in it. Yeah. Uh, Probably say Arby. Henri, yeah, love it. I'm an Arsenal fan, mate, so yeah, good choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, hardest team? I don't know if you've sort of touched on it already, but hardest team you've hardest played team against? Hardest that i played against? Um, a hardest team? I don't know. It would probably be, it'd be a team in League, League One when we were playing. Yeah. Probably Ipswich. Ipswich, yeah. Yeah, Ipswich were, Ipswich were proper good. But then okay, I wouldn't nice. say they were that them. I wouldn't say they were like because I felt like we could have beat them. 
So I wouldn't <laughs> say like that. Would, I, I wasn't looking at them like, oh, my days. Like they're, they're really you weren't good. in awe of them? Yeah, I wasn't in awe of them at all. But nah. they were good. They were a good team. Sunderland yeah, were okay. good as well when I came on. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah good, good shout. Um, if you weren't a footballer, what do you reckon you'd be doing? Uh, I don't know. I actually don't know what I'd be doing. I, I couldn't tell you. I'd probably nah, just go not back clear, to yeah. Australia. I'd go yeah. back to Australia. I'd probably, probably be electrician. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Trade, fair enough. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that smart in it. So it'd be something like hands-on, or I'd probably be like a PE teacher at school, or or I'd just something be physical, yeah. I'll just be on the beach. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds alright. I don't yeah. know. I've never thought of what I'll do instead of football. When I when I made my my decision to move to England, I always thought I'm playing football and that that's it. So I didn't have so, a yeah, backup. Fair then. enough. Don't have yeah. a clue. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think a lot of people, a lot of footballers have that answer. To be fair, which is the right way to be. I think. Yeah. Um, favorite artist at the moment uh, who's top of Spotify Boston Richie you might not know he's American nah. he's a rap American rapper Boston Richie okay. I listen to him a lot yeah, yeah. okay nice um, what's oh yeah what team do you support do you support uh, an English team uh, yeah United United um, <laughs> yeah I don't know United I don't know yeah. Don't want to talk about them at the moment, do you? Yeah, I don't really want to talk about that. Ah. Yeah, we'll leave that. <laughs> yeah. They've had enough scrutiny. Um literally. Last one. What was your best moment in football? Getting called up, the Olympic squad. But obviously scoring my scoring that goal against Wimbledon, that was on the pitch, that was that felt like amazing. I didn't know what to do. I can't explain it. <laughs> I was I was I was lost. I was lost. You know, like before, like you score, you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to do this celebration and that celebration. I'm running over to the camera. And I scored that. Uh, everything, my mind went blank. Like, I didn't do, I didn't know what to do. But that was, that was a good moment. But getting called up to the Olympic was the top, top thing for me in my career. Yeah. I can't blame you for that. That's, that's going to be a hard one to beat, I think. Yeah, literally, yeah. Um, well, Listen, Jay, I appreciate the time, mate. I think we'll leave it there. Yeah. Thank um, you. Listen, thanks for coming on. And uh, I hope you, good luck for the rest of the season, first of all. And I hope you yeah. uh, hope you get back to feeling fully fit. Yeah, thank you for having me on this. It was a pleasure. Nah, thank you. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks. Nice one. Yes, guys, thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, could you please follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It massively helps us out.